Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. After learning the epidemiology, the clinical features and the different classifications of leprosy, today we shall learn the diagnosis and management of the leprosy cases. Diagnosis is based on the presence of one or more of the clinical features. The first clinical feature is the hypopigmented or pale or erythematous patch on the skin and these patches should be thoroughly examined under good and adequate light and they should also be tested for any loss of sensation. The next one is the thickening of the peripheral nerves. So the nerves can be either thickened or tenderness can be there. There may or may not be some sensory deficit. So peripheral nerves should be tested for any thickening or tenderness and nerve functions both sensory and motor functions should also be assessed. In advanced stage of the disease, some patient may present with nodular infiltration of the face, of the extremities and in some cases there may be some deformities like claw hand, claw feet, loss of limb or fingers. So these are also important clinical features. And the next one is the microbiological testing that is the positive skin smear. It is routinely not done or not recommended for diagnosis and initiation of treatment that means based on the clinical features alone we can start the treatment but sometimes uh, these tests are done and however the presence of bacilli in the skin smear is indicative of multibacillary leprosy irrespective of the number of skin lesions or nerve involvement earlier we learned that if there are more than five lesions or more than one nerve involvement then it is considered as multibacillary leprosy but sometimes if the there is not adequate number of nerve involvement or skin lesions but even after that we find the bacilli in the skin smear it will also be considered as multibacillary leprosy smears are taken from at least two sides uh, one from the active skin lesion and another from the ear lobe one of the ear lobes and the method that is used is slit and scrape method. Jaden staining that is zil nielsen staining is used for identification of bacilli under the microscope and bacteriological examination that is done under microscope includes two components. They are the bacteriological index and morphological index. Bacteriological index measures the density of organism both living and dead in the smear. So that means uh, how many organisms are there in a particular uh, area of the uh, slide and both living organism and dead organism are considered for this bacteriological index. Leprosy is diagnosed as posse or multibacillary based on the bacteriological index. Morphological index measures the viable bacilli which look solid and stained uniformly under the microscope. So it is talking about the morphological pattern of the bacilli, whether that is solid and stained uniformly uh, that is uh, told by the morphological index. A rising bacteriological or morphological index during or after full treatment indicates there is drug resistance or relapse. Let us talk about the prevention and control of leprosy cases. First, the primary prevention, which are the steps taken prior to the onset of the disease so that the development of the disease can be prevented. One of the major components of primary prevention is the IAC, that is information, education and communication for generating awareness among the people regarding the disease. If there is adequate community awareness that will ensure the early diagnosis of the cases as well as early initiation of the treatment and that will uh, prevent the progression of the disease further. But if certain deformities have already taken places, then there is scope for rehabilitation as well. 
community awareness will also reduce the stigma any kind of misconception among the people and that will ensure the social participation in different activities of the patients next is vaccination or immunization we know about bcg vaccine which is given for tuberculosis to prevent tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis so that is also another bacteria from the mycobacterium group bcg vaccine has some role in prevention uh, of leprosy now the what is the efficacy of bcg vaccine uh, in protecting uh, against leprosy this range uh, is different in different publications different articles but there is definitely certain role of bcg vaccination uh, against the leprosy certain messages that we should keep in our mind during the ic procedure like leprosy is not hereditary it does not come from your family it is the least infectious that means it is not highly infectious lot of people think it is very much infectious and you should not get close to any person uh, who is suffering from the disease that is not so leprosy is completely curable early diagnosis and treatment can completely prevent the progression of the disease treatment with multi drug therapy prevents any disability and treatment makes an infectious person non infectious treatment is available at all government health institution free of cost so under the uh, nlep program that we have for leprosy this multi drug therapy uh, for leprosy is distributed free of cost among the patients uh, from all these hospitals next is secondary prevention that means the disease has already taken place now what we can do of course the first thing that we have to do is to detect the cases as early as possible and to start the treatment as early as possible case detection approaches can be either passive or active passive case finding is by voluntary reporting of the cases when the patients with certain complaints come to the hospital and you diagnose that it is a case of leprosy also we can have active case finding where house to house visit is done in high priority areas to find out the cases and we know about the treatment with uh, multi drug therapy there are certain drugs let us learn about the regimen the multi drug therapy or mdt regimen for adults we have already defined the possi bacillary and multi bacillary cases in our previous video and this Uh, classification is done based on the number of uh, lesions as well as the number of nerve involvement anyway on possi bacillary cases uh, we give two drugs rifampicin and dapsone rifampicin is given 600 mg once monthly and it is given under supervision whereas dapsone is given as 100 mg on daily basis multi bacillary cases we give three drugs rifampicin dapsone and clofazibine the dose of rifampicin and dapsone are same as that of the possi bacillary cases but in case of clofazimin we give once a month 300 mg along with that 50 mg daily that means when the person goes to the health center to receive the drugs on the very same day he will receive the 300 mg only one time and from the following day for the rest of the months he will receive 50 mg daily basis so this is the mdt regimen for adults in case of children uh, 10 to 14 years of age group here also the possi bacillary and multi bacillary cases the drugs are same the doses are different in possi bacillary case uh, rifampicin is 450 mg and dapsone is 50 mg as compared to 600 mg and 100 mg respectively uh, in adults in multi bacillary case in children the dose of rifampicin and dapsone is same as the possi bacillary case but here the clofazimin is given 150 mg once a month uh, under supervision that is on the first day and for the rest of the days in the month 50 mg on alternate day here in adults we give 50 mg daily but in case of children it is given on alternate day and children under the age of 10 years should receive appropriately reduced doses of the above drugs depending on the body weight what about the duration treatment that means for how many days a person is supposed to take the medicines in case of multi bacillary leprosy uh, the treatment is of 12 months 
but sometimes what happens a patient may discontinue or may not take the drug for a few months or maybe few weeks so the uh, duration overall duration may increase but he has to take the blister packs or mb blister packs for 12 months duration and this treatment has to be completed within 18 months that is one and half year so even with some uh, discontinuation in between the drugs uh, the 12 months worth amount of drug must be completed within 18 months in case of possibility this is also same but the durations are different the six months worth of the drugs should be taken within nine months it is better if the six month drugs are taken in six months but if due to any reason there is discontinuation of the drug uh, the duration of treatment cannot go beyond nine months that means he has to complete all the drugs uh, within the nine months okay what about a defaulter a defaulter who returns to the health center for treatment should be given a new course of mdt when he or she shows one or more of the following signs okay so these are the signs uh, if there is any reddish or any raised skin lesions appearance of new skin lesions since the previous examination new nerve involvement like changes in skin sensation uh, since the previous examination uh, lepromatous nodules signs of reversal of uh, erythema nodosum leprosum enl so if all these things are present in a defaulter then uh, it is ideal that a new course of MDT is started and for registration purpose returning defaulters are not considered as new defect new related cases they are considered as the uh, defaulter cases so they are not supposed to be considered as a new case the next one is the tertiary prevention that means that means the disease has already taken place and it has progressed and maybe certain uh, complications in terms of disability uh, you know that has uh, already taken place so what we can do first is the disability prevention where the early diagnosis and treatment of leprosy before the nerve damage sets in that can prevent disability so that is why this is very important that we can detect the cases as well as possible and also initiate the treatment and that will uh, prevent the further progression of the disease and any kind of disability can be prevented there is also early identification of lepra reaction and its management and care of wound or ulcer by self-care practices which includes care of the dry skin by applying oils use of suitable footwear scraping of the hard skin prevention of any kind of injury so these are the different uh, self-care practices for disability prevention what about rehabilitation certain examples are given here for example medical rehabilitation we can use the microcellulose rubber or mcr footwear or in certain cases where the surgery is necessary we can go for the reconstructive surgeries social and psychological rehabilitation it is important for awareness generation and also to empower and promote the dignity and respect of the affected person the person who is suffering from the disease possible only by abolition of all discriminatory laws so here the legal system uh, has to work uh, and they have to focus on all these pre prejudices the myths uh, the misconceptions against all these things so that a person who is suffering from the disease gets the dignity and respect that he deserves vocational rehabilitation means the person may not be able to uh, you know work in a place or uh, in, in certain environment that is not safe for him so to be employed in a safe working environment may be referred to vocational training for skill development and empowerment programs so these are the different kind of rehabilitations with this we conclude today's session today we have learned the diagnosis uh, based on the clinical features also the microbiological diagnosis of leprosy and then the different levels of prevention the primary the secondary and tertiary level of prevention including the multi-drug therapy regimen for possibility as well as multi cases in both adults as well as children 10 to 14 years of age group thank you if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends from other colleges we also have a Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Take care and we shall see you in our next video.